What's up everybody, it's Death I Bring and I'm back to you today. I'm gonna give you some more useful information on how to be a correct convict and live, make it through that journey through the concrete jungle that everyone's so worried about going to. Uh, we're gonna be talking about tattoos, some of the tattoos that got me into some stuff that I shouldn't have gotten into and I kinda wish I never gotten. Okay, first things first, let me tell you a little bit about these tattoos. A lot of people get tattoos sometimes without knowing that, uh, let me just tell you, I was 17 when I first got locked up and in a real jail and all that, and then I went to prison from there on. I never went out on the streets or anything else after that, but um, I also started when I was juvenile, but juvenile doesn't count because... It just doesn't, okay? You don't really learn too much about stuff in there. Anyway, so, these tattoos uh, that I've gotten when I first got to prison, because when I first got to prison, that was the first thing on my mind was get tattoos. I heard about them in jail, and I was on a mission to go to the penitentiary and start tattooing and get tattoos. I was going to cover myself. I couldn't wait. I was in jail plucking myself until the, until the bus came and got me. I was in jail for like a year and a half fighting trials and stuff. But I'm going to show you some of the tattoos that I got while locked up. It was my first ones. And I, I, you know, I'm going to tell you how I got them, what made me get them, this, that, and the third. So let's get right up into this, man. Alright, so for the first one, uh, it's not, I didn't get in trouble with it because of, um, gang-wise. I'm going to show you two or three of them that I did get in trouble, or almost got in trouble. I got a mean talk game, man. When I went and talked to some of these, uh, shot callers and OGs, I just talked my way right around it, man. Even though I probably should have got jacked up for it for false advertising. Even though I didn't mean for it to be false advertising. I wasn't trying to. I got it because for other reasons, and I'm going to explain to you why I got the tattoos that got me almost hemmed up in there. But the first one is, I'm going to show you, is not because of a gang related, okay? The first one is because it got so infected that I almost had to get my leg cut off. That's right. It was one of my first tattoos that I did when I got there. It was on my leg. And I'm going to show it to you in a second. It was on my leg. It was a cross. Now it kind of just looks like a cross mixed with a blob. That's right. Anyways, I, I've already gotten tattooed in there a couple times. This was like my third tattoo in there. But I was doing them all on myself. So, it was me doing them. I was just learning how to tattoo because I wanted to tattoo. And make some extra money. God, I wish I would have known what I know now before I started doing tattoos. Wanted to do tattoos in prison. Anyways. So, uh, I did this tattoo with this cross. It got so infected. I mean, it was turning green, man. And honestly, I don't know why it was turning green. Everything I used was brand new. I think it might have been just... Uh, I didn't sharpen my needle right. This was when I first made my prison needle. I didn't know you had to sharpen them. I just thought you burnt the needle apart, stretched it apart, and when it broke apart, that was all you needed. Well, I was wrong, man. You gotta sharpen them things. If you don't know how to sharpen them, go watch my sharpen how to sharpen your needles video. Anyways, uh, so. This thing scabbed up so bad, man, and uh, it was just hurting. It was throbbing uh, after a couple of days. At first, it looked really good. I was like, dang, yeah, this thing looks dope. Anyway, so it didn't. It day two, day one, it started getting, the temperature started rising on the wound. And I could tell that something was wrong because it was really warm to the touch. I was like, maybe it's just because it was a lot of black work. Well, I was sadly mistaken, my friend. Uh, day two came around, and this sucker is inflamed. I literally, I was on top bunk, okay? And when I jumped down off the top bunk, let me fix this. When I jumped down off the top bunk, I literally collapsed because my leg was numb. 
I thought I slept on it wrong. No, I didn't. This thing had my legs swelled up, my shin swelled up, and I could literally see the blood pulsating poo -poo, poo -poo, in my leg. Okay? The only time it didn't hurt is when I laid down and put my, my foot on a pillow or something and had the blood rush into my head. Because if the blood went to that leg, it would throb. It was like poo 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 poo. And I could see it, man. And it was insane. And I didn't want to go to medic because I would have caught a charge. I would have lost visitation. I probably went to hole for a little bit because I already gotten caught once. And then uh, I would have had to pay a fine. And then I would have got my canteen taken, my food, everything, man, my television. I didn't want to do that. So I fought it out as long as possible. Well, turns out. Let me just go ahead and show you what it looks like first, now, and then finish, and end my story with what happened. So, let's go ahead and do that. Alright everybody, there it is. Do you see this right here? This scarring? This is, it was all black. Now this was supposed to be a cross with Jesus' rag, uh, like his uh, drape robe or whatever. It was crawl it was hanging over the uh, wood, dr like draping over the wood. Anyway, so, Lucy, get out of here. This was it. And these two got demon faces as well. There were supposed to be faces of demons coming out of the skin because he was killing death on the cross okay he died to destroy the power of death anyway those look horrible don't they I know trust me I know they are horrible but they were some of the first ones I've ever gotten done in prison anyways and this is the cross God this thing almost had to get my leg chopped off okay let me just explain something to you alright this cross was completely covered in a thick scab. It was so thick that I was indenting my shin. And I still got a slight indention in it. So, with that being said, now that you see what I was working with. And this covers my whole front part of my shin. It's got Mary Magdalene on the side. I got Jesus up here. It's supposed to be like my religious leg. Okay? Now, let me tell you the end of this story. So... The de the cross, I had to, I had to go to the doctor. It was that was just what it was. So I went to the doctor. They literally peeled a piece of the scab off, man. I mean, it hurt. It hurt so bad. They didn't numb it or nothing. I don't think you understand in pen penitentiary uh, emergency rooms. They don't really give you the best of medical attention. That's just how it is, man. So. They peeled a little bit of this scab off, and it was so thick. It was driving me nuts, man. It was hurting so bad. And, um, they put a shot in there, uh, I guess some kind of shot, I don't know what it was, they gave me a couple antibiotic pills, and then they told me if it worsens within next day or two, after all this, then we're probably going to be going to an outside hospital, because you're going to have to get your leg cut off, is pretty much what they said. Can you believe that, man? I was terrified going back to that cell. Anyways, they didn't lock me up. They didn't give me no fine or nothing, man. They said, you know what? You're going through enough stuff as it is. We're just going to let you learn from your own mistakes. And you know what? I don't think you're going to be getting any more tattoos after this one. Well, I didn't learn from my mistakes, and I went and covered my whole freaking body. But, um, but fortunately, it never happened again. And I realized that you got to sharpen needles, and I, I figured out how to make the ink properly. So... There you have it, man. They fixed it. I almost freaking had to get my leg chopped off behind this crazy, crazy tattoo. Next, we are going to talk about some gang-related tattoos that people have in their, use in their gangs that I had no idea about. This is before I had any idea about gang life at all, okay? I was riding solo, lone wolf soldier, running around there acting crazy in prison, man. I just didn't care. Okay, I didn't see nothing yet. That's why I didn't care. But, now I care. I've seen a lot. So let me show you the next tattoo. 
All right, everybody. Well, now you can tell that, you know, I look like I have a lot of good tattoos on me. But in all honesty, my tattoos are trash, man. They're horrible. I love them. Don't get me wrong. I love them. But they're horrible. Now, this tattoo right here, 13. I will never forget it, man. I just want to show it to you before I tell you the story. First of all, I got this because I am not an MS-13. That's right. I am absolutely not. This 13 goes along with these half symbol right next to it. Do you see it right here? Half. 13 and a half. In jail, I saw this guy with it, and he told me exactly what it was. And I saw a bunch of guys with it after that, and I was like, dang, everyone's got this. I guess it must be like a Virginia thing. I don't know. Maybe you heard of it. Maybe you can tell me if you have heard of it or not. But this is what everyone knows. And a lot of people didn't know it, but a lot of people did. Usually the older heads. 13 and a half. It stood for 12 jurors, one judge, which equals 13. 12 jurors, one judge, and a half-ass chance. That's right. 13 and a half was a prison saying called 12 jurors, one judge, and a half-ass chance. So, let me tell you the story about how the MS-13s ran up on me. Alright, well first of all, I said how the MS-13s ran up on me. Honestly, I don't even know if they were MS-13, to tell you the truth. I really don't. Because uh, I was fresh, man. I didn't know no gang stuff at all, I'm telling you. And if I did, it was just really about bloods and crips it wasn't really about the spanish gang so much because i just didn't never indulged in it okay when i grew up uh when i was a kid in this area there wasn't many spanish people for me to uh like i'm colombian and white okay there was never really too many spanish people around here or latino people to be able to talk to about gang life and stuff like that in this area virginia virginia it just wasn't. It was just black, white. There were some, you know, renegade Hispanics running around, but uh, it's just, it is what it was. I didn't know them like that. I didn't know them. So I didn't know any information. But I did hang out with white guys and black guys, and they told me some of the ins and outs about gangs and stuff when I was on the streets. But for the most part, I went to prison not knowing nothing. So these Spanish guys come up to me, man freaking vatos come running up on me and I'm like oh snap they're gonna try to get me to join their clique or something and I was like I hope they do ask me I kind of want to that's what I said to myself you know I was in, I was so young and just tripping I was like hmm I wonder you know that's another thing uh I'm gonna make a video on it biracial people going into prison or jail where do you fit in I'm gonna tell y'all Anyways, stay tuned for that one. So the Hispanics rolled up on me, and they're like, yo, they say something, pretty much asking me if I'm MS-13. And I don't know if they were MS-13, it could have been some other Spanish gang, but uh, they asked me that, and I was like, no, nah, man, no, nah, no, nah. I try to explain to them the best way possible what 13 and the half stood for. Back then, I didn't have any of that stuff around. It was just a 13 and a half. So it kind of helped the situation. They're like, okay, okay. And then they asked me, are you disrespecting MS-13 by having that half symbol? You sure that's what? That's not what you're doing? And I said, no, nah, man. Look, I don't know anything about MS-13. I'm not trying to claim them. My name's Josh, man. <coughs> I don't gangbang. Straight up. And then uh, they kind of laugh at me, man. They're laughing at me, and they start speaking in uh, Spanish and stuff like that. And then uh, this one guy comes up to me, and he pats me on my head. He just pats me on my head. And I'm like, what is going on here? Why the hell? And then, you know, I kind of pull back a little bit, you know what I mean? And uh, he just they're just laughing, and they walk off. That's it. That was the end of it. But... Those those damn Vatos were looking crazy, bruh. They looked like they were trying to kill me. I wish you could have seen them, tatted from head to toe. Uh, and this was in a receiving part of prison, so 
they were come and go, come and go, come and go. So I didn't really have time to read their tats over, you know, doing time and figure out who they were a part of. But I did get ran up on thinking that was MS-13. And I'm sure still to this day a lot of people think I'm MS-13 behind that. Next, let's go to tattoo number two. Yeah. Okay, do y'all see that C on the back of my back, on the top of that crown? As you can see, I got Tidewater across the top of my back, representing exactly where I'm from. And there's a C on top of this crown right here. So y'all saw the C that's on the top of my back. Now that thing got me in a lot of trouble, man. Not physically, I did. I was able to. I got a mean talk game. Don't forget that now. I have. I was able to talk my way out of it. But one, I wasn't really talking my way out of it. I was teaching people what it really stood for, and they they take in all the of uh, all their stuff, all their intel, and then they determine whether or not I'm lying. And most of the time, I'm always telling the truth to everyone. And you can really see, these guys have seen liars their whole life, okay? They've been locked up around liars their whole life or on the streets. So they can pretty much read a liar and a storyteller off back. So uh, this got me in trouble with the Crips, Bloods. Not in trouble, but I was in question and I was in the jury trial again. With the Crips, Bloods, GDs, Folks, Vice Lords, whatever you want to say. You name them, man. I had them come up to me behind this tattoo. Now, I drew the crown up and my back piece up how I wanted it, okay? I wanted Tidewater across the top to represent where I'm from some more. Uh, I wanted the crown on my back just because I loved the crown. I loved it. I was saying I was, I was a king of Tidewater. And... I had to see, I was so immature back then, man. But anyway, I had to see on the top because I was born, well, I wasn't born. I was born in uh, Newport News, but I was raised in Chesapeake. And the C stood for Chesapeake. Now, when I first got in there, I told you I didn't roll with no gangs or nothing. I rolled with, with who I lived around. And that considered had a gang in itself, representing 757 in jails and prisons that are battling between Richmond or Connecticut or DC cats or beefing with other places like it was mainly Richmond versus Tidewater in some of the prisons I went to it was crazy even the gangs even if they're in the same gang set or gang they would still be beefing because the Richmond and the Tidewater guys were always beefing in some prisons so that's what I got. So I was kind of in a gang, but I wasn't. I was rolling with everyone that I stayed with in my area. And see, the area is a very vital part to how to survive in prison. I can't tell you what they do on the West Coast because it is so different. Every prison and every jail is really raided by their area and the people that are living in it. So, with that being said, my videos are not going to help you if you're going to the West Coast when it comes to gang life because they might carry it totally, totally different in the penitentiary. But, for the most part, what I'm saying about gang life is completely true. It's universal everywhere you go. So, with that being said, these guys rolled up on me. And they would ask me all the time. But I pretty much just explained it to them exactly how I just explained it to you. Uh, I was just representing where I came from. This and third. And you know what? I always ended the conversation with whoever I was talking to with respect, man. We were respected each other. I guess the, you know this saying is very true, okay? I don't care. This is one saying that I love and I know. It is a very truthful saying. Real, recognize real, okay? You can look a person in their face and eyes and almost determine whether or not they've been through it, man. You can hear it in their voice. You can hear pain as they talk. When you think about the penitentiary or you're talking about the penitentiary, there's pain in it, man, okay? Penitentiary's rough. It ain't no cake walk. It ain't all about making freaking uh, swoles and cakes, okay? That's just if you're hungry. But this stuff is rough, man. It's a concrete jungle, man. You fall down, you're probably going to get hurt just because everything in there is metal and concrete. You get in a fight and your head bounces off of a, a, a bunk. 
and it splits your freaking wig open because everything in there is, is going to hurt you, okay? There's nothing soft in prison. It's all hard, man. Everything is hard and it will hurt you. And that's the real talk about prison, man, and gang life. It's stuff is not for the weak, okay? You have to stay strong. Even if you are weak, you better play that role, okay? You better make sure no one sees your weaknesses. Because once they do, they're going to feed off you, feed off of it like birds, seagulls. They're just going to jump on you and keep on eating at you. So remember, you got to be strong, man. Get that fear out of your mind because they can see it and they can read it. Anyways, I want to thank everyone who's been watching, man. Those were some of the tattoos that have got me into some trouble, uh, close to some trouble. And I've got other ones too, but I'm not going to make this a super long video. But uh, for the most part, those those were some very vital tattoos that I recommend you not getting. Uh, and, and there's dice tattoos. I got some dice tattooed on me with one, two, three on them. That's a gang set. I just, you know, had to find out the hard way. But uh, anyways, I want to thank everyone who's been liking and subscribing my channel. And if you haven't done it, Go ahead and do it, man, because this is the realest prison channel you're going to see. There's no embellishments. There's no uh, uh, dramatics. There ain't going to be none of that stuff. All right? I'm just going to speak to you how I speak to it. And this is the East Coast version of the penitentiaries. If you're from the East Coast, this is the stuff you're going to need to watch. So until next time, man, you read the letters. I got it tattooed on my chest. Prison, baby. Death I bring.